In this video, I'm here to look at something new, uh, something kind of exciting to me, which is, and let me just demonstrate it for you first. What I have here, right over here, is a HTML5 canvas. It's using something called P5.js, and I can move my mouse around it, and I can click and draw on that canvas. But look what happens when I do that. When I click and draw on that canvas, there's another canvas over here where that same drawing appears. <laughs> and if I come over here, and I draw here, Something in this canvas appears, and you can see the color is inverted. Now, this might not seem so magical to you, but I, I, I'm, I'm making the case to you that these two browser windows with these two canvases could be on separate computers in separate parts of the world. So what I'm here to demonstrate to you today in a series of short tutorial videos is how to use server-side programming with your P5.js creative sketch to allow for real-time communication between multiple users of your sketch. So this could be used for playing a game or a collaborative something or other. You could have video. Also, there's lots of possibilities of things you could do. But I'm going to demonstrate it with a basic collaborative shared drawing space. So I have, we have to add, if, if you're coming to this video having only ever done the basics of programming in JavaScript with P5.js, you're in the right place. We're going to add something to this, which is server-side programming with Node.js. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, I have done some stuff about Node in some videos about making Twitter bots, but we're going to do something slightly different with Node here, and I'm going to start a bit from scratch again. So let's, um, let me talk about what the pieces of this are. So for example, uh, the idea here is that you have a laptop, and that laptop has a browser window with a canvas that you're drawing in. And somewhere else in some other part of the world, there is another laptop with that canvas and uh, with a canvas and as you draw that same drawing appears over there. So somewhere else there needs to be a server. What happens is this particular instance of your P5.js sketch talks to that server with something known as a socket. Socket being a real-time connection between two applications that can send data back and forth. This particular client also talks to that server with a socket so that when the user moves the mouse, an event is triggered where the X and Y coordinate of the mouse is sent to the server. The server sends the X and Y coordinate of that mouse back to this other one, and then this other one receives that message and draws. So the issue is you, we know how to write a JavaScript program where you move the mouse and you draw stuff. That's what's the thing that's happening over here. What maybe we don't know how to do, what I haven't covered in any of my videos before, is how to write this server program. And the platform that I'll write the server program in is something called node.js. There are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different ways and languages and frameworks and things you can do server-side programming with. Building big, giant web applications is a huge, massive, scary, weird, but, not, but friendly and nice topic way beyond the scope of what I'm doing here. What I want to do is just look at a, a simple framework, Node, um, which will allow me to host the files, the P5.js sketch, as well as make those socket connections. So this is the basic sketch of what uh, I want to do. And so the first thing I need to show you how to do is download Node, install Node, and run something in Node. And then uh, I'll get to more after I do that. <laughs> Questions? You can't ask a question because this is a video. But, 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 uh, but, but find me somewhere. OK. Um, so I'm back over here. I'm going to close. Uh, here's my computer. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to close this. And oh, look where I am. I am here on the Node.js website. So if you go to nodejs.org uh, for quick access, place your bookmarks here, blah, 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 um, download your appropriate version of Node, run the installer. You can see that I'm doing it here on Mac on a Mac operating system, an Apple operating system, OS X. I've downloaded it, I've installed it. Once you've done that, you should be able to go to a command line view of your computer. Now, on the Mac, the easiest way to do this is with an application called Terminal, which looks like this, and it's usually found in Applications Utilities. On Windows, insert annotation here, which will say the thing you should use on Windows. Um, <laughs> And uh, whoops, you can see uh, that I already have ah, terminal open. And when you see it, it'll look something like this. And I'm going to make the font bigger. Boy, I'm not prepared for this video. I'm going to make the font bigger so you can see it better. So this is ah, 
Come back to me, computer. Um, this is a terminal window, and terminal window is a place where you can type all sorts of commands in. Now, I'm going to leave, uh, uh, you know, someday I should make just like introduction to terminal and Unix commands type thing, but right now I'm just going to give you some basic stuff that you need to know. The first thing you want to do, it realizes that if you've installed Node properly, you can just type the word Node into terminal and hit run. I hit run, hit enter, and then suddenly you see this other line. Strangely enough, this is now a place where I can type JavaScript. Like I could say 5 plus 6 equals 11, or I could say var x equals 100, and then I could say x plus plus, and then I could say x is now uh, 101 somehow. Um, <laughs> I, know I meant to say x equals x plus plus, but anyway, no, no, x plus plus, I digress. The point is, I'm somehow now in JavaScript land in Terminal. But this is not really what I want to do. What I really want to do is write JavaScript programs in a text editor that I can trigger from, uh, from this node command in Terminal. And, I, and, I, and I, 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 I forgot something important over here, which is to say that the point of all this is this might be ultimately how you eventually want your application to live a server somewhere in the internet, clients all over the world connecting to that server. But what I'm doing right now, and if you're following along and doing it too, is running all of these pieces on one single machine. So I'm going to run the server on my laptop using Node. I'm going to run the client in the browser on my laptop. I'm going to run another client in a separate browser window on my laptop, just for testing and making sure it all works. OK, so over here, one of the commands that I, uh, Control C, by the way, is how you quit. Uh, uh, clear will get me back up to the top. One of the commands that's really important that I want to use is cd for change directory. And I want to go to a folder where I have some p5.js files because eventually I'm going to be using a p5.js sketch in connection with what I'm doing. So I want to go there and then I'm going to go to the finder and I'm going to go to my desktop because I already made a folder on my desktop called sockets coding rainbow. And the only thing in that folder is just kind of like the stuff that you would have for a p5.js sketch. An HTML file, a sketch.js file, a libraries folder. So if you're like, trying to follow along, you know, pause the video now, get yourself a, a folder with the stuff that you would have with a p5.js sketch in there and then you can keep going. So what I, want, what I can do is when I type cd is I can take this folder and drag it into terminal. And you can see now this is the full path to that directory. Users slash processing slash desktop slash sockets coding rainbow. So if I hit enter, I am now in that directory. Another command that I could type is ls. I can see that's listing all the files that are in that directory. And in fact, I already have, hopefully, a text editor open to that directory. Right here, you can see because what I want to do in this directory is now make a new file. I want to make a file and I'm going to call it uh, server.js. Notice I now have a new text file called server.js. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to just say something like console.log my socket server is running. So here's the magic of Node. Node is a JavaScript program that you can execute from the command line. It doesn't involve a browser. It doesn't involve a window, graphics. I mean, all those things are possible in the sort of landscape of things you might do. But this program now that has one line of code in it, I can go back to terminal and I can say node server.js. I can hit enter. And I can see that my socket server is running. Now, my socket server is not running because I don't have any of the code for the socket server here. So this is what I'm going to get into in the next video. So what, if you're following along, what you should have now in your head is a general sense of what is going on, server-side programming with node.js. Conveniently, by the way, one of the reasons why I picked node.js is because it's JavaScript and so you don't have to learn a new programming language. Um, so server-side program with node.js, you've got that installed on your laptop. You've got the idea of making a p5.js sketch. So, and then you have a directory that has both a node program in it under sketch.js and your p5.js, oh, sorry, under server.js and your p5.js files. And once you have that, maybe put some test code in server.js. Run that test code, you've got node running, you've got your p5.js, empty p5.js sketch ready to go, and you'll be ready for the next step, which is starting to add the actual code for the socket server.